Hello everyone, this is Doug Bassett from Stormwind Epic Live and we had a student request a little bit of information on the Windows uh, answer files. How can we automate our installation? Now this comes from our Windows 7 class where we talk about the Windows System Image Manager. If you're planning on taking the exam or you're just planning on deploying these operating systems, we don't use our old answer files that we had before. These are now used with uh, XML files and you use the Windows System Image Manager to create them. So a lot of people says, okay, that's cool. That's kind of the information I need for the exam. But then when it's time to be the person that your resume says you are and you're actually going to try to install this and set up an answer file, it can be a little confusing. Now this is all part of the automated installation kit. So you have to go and, and download it from Microsoft. Just do a search for the Windows Automated Installation Kit and go ahead and install it on the system that you're going to use to create these answer files. And this is what I've done over here on my Windows 7 machine. So how do I know it's installed? Well, if you go under All Programs, you'll see that we have the Windows Automated Installation Kit. And underneath here, we have the Windows System Image Manager. So we'll go ahead and fire that off. That looks promising. And I'm going to create a brand new answer file. So I'll say File, New Answer File. Cool. So far, so good. Pretty intuitive. Uh, let's make some changes. No available properties. Nothing we can change. What's up with that? Well, one of the things that Microsoft has done is they want you to use a WIM file. That's your uh, image file that you have. And this has all the various settings and it's used to populate our particular interface. And this is where a lot of people have a lot of problems. First question is, where in the world do I get an image file? Well, let's go ahead and show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go File and I will say select a Windows image. Your installation CD for Windows 7 has a whole bunch of files on it. And one thing to realize is that these particular image files are, are kind of generic. Microsoft has one media that has your professional, your home, your home basic, all that stuff. And what happens is, is when you put in the license, it will determine what particular operating system you're actually installing. But we want to make answer files specific to our particular version so what we're going to do is we're going to go with the generic install file that has all of them and then it'll pop up and say, okay, well, which particular answer file do you want? So we're just going to go, and again, this is right off of my installation DVD. There's a folder called Sources. You go into Sources and then you select the install.wim file. Now, it's pretty intelligent because what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, what particular flavor of operating system are you going to make the answer file for? And what we're going to do is we're going to select Windows 7 Professional. So I'll say OK. And wow, still no available properties. Well, wait a minute. I want to do something like set up my, my base partition so that I can have it formatted and get all that stuff set up. Well, if you look over here, down in the lower corner, you have all of these all sorts of components. And there's just tons and tons and tons of settings. We're talking massive levels of granularity. And Microsoft has put them in here so that you can pick and choose what you want so your answer files don't get full of a lot of stuff that says, no change, no change, go with the defaults, ask a user, we don't know. Instead, you just pick the ones that you want. So you can go through and you can see, you know, I have DNS, disk failure diagnostics, international settings, media player settings, partition manager settings, all that good stuff. But we're setting up an answer file specifically for the installation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to select installation. So we'll go in here and we have a Windows Setup. So we'll say, let's see, PQRS, Windows Setup. And notice that it says nice and neutral for us. And look at all these different settings that we have. Uh, are you compliant? What diagnostics? Your display configuration? Run it all together. Upgrade data. And this is just the real basic stuff, but you can go through and you can add your audio and your Windows Defender and all that. But we're just going to show you the process here because we don't have a <laughs> ton of time that we want to spend doing an hour-long video here. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to get into disk configuration. Inside of disk configuration, we'll drop down into disk and we have create and modify partitions. Hey, finally we've been able to find exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to go into create partition and I'm going to right click on it and it's going to say, well, where are you going to add this? Now, realize that if you try and change the partitions by formatting them and changing them right in the middle of the installation, well, 
your installation that you've already done is all of a sudden going to be wiped out and Microsoft is aware of this. So they say you can only do it to Windows PE. That's that pre-boot execution area that allows you to go in and do all this stuff before you actually install the operating system. And that's really the only place that this makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Inside of Modify Partitions, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now notice that we're starting to get properties populated over here on the right-hand side. And I want to make modifications to those properties. So we're going to create a partition. And what partition are we going to create? Well, um, actually, let me go to disk here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with a disk ID. This is going to be the first disk drive. So we're going to call that one disk zero. And we are going to clean out all the old nasty stuff that used to be on that disk. Now realize, <laughs> This is going to wipe out the partition. So any data that you want on this old system, it's not going to be an upgrade. We're going to wipe the partition, so be aware of that. And we're going to create a partition. Um, we will go ahead and extend it, so we'll say true. And the order that we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the order so that it is going to be uh, 1. So we'll say 1. Um, we're going to set up a size. We're not going to set up uh, a type. We're going to set the type to primary partition, so it's going to be a primary partition. But we do have some other options. For example, I can say extended logical EFI, you know, whatever. We're just going to keep it simple. Then we're going to modify our partitions by selecting modify and active. Yep, we're going to make this an active partition. Uh, we're going to say it is extended. We want to format it to good old NTFS. We're going to give it a label. We're going to call this one our Windows Partition. If I could type here, W-I-N-D-O-W-S. There we go. And we want this to be our C drive. So we'll drop this down, select our C drive. The order, we've already set that before, so we'll set it as 1. And Partition is 1. This is important. Partition 0 means the entire disk. But if we say Partition 1, that's just going to be that first partition. We don't have to put in a type ID. Now, I've gone through and I've made changes. How do we know if these particular changes are actually valid? Maybe I'm adding audio this and changing that, and I've put together some components that have some conflicts. Well, fortunately, Microsoft has provided us with a validation tool. So let's go ahead and show you that. I'm going to go up to Tools, and we'll say Validate the Answer File. And it goes through, and hey, no warnings, no errors. We are in the tall cotton here. But I still have to save the answer file. It's not going to do us any good to have an answer file if we don't save it. Oh, it looks good, but we can't use it. So go into Tools. And we're going to generate what they call a configuration set. Now, I know Microsoft documentation calls an answer file. Everybody calls an answer file. In fact, the file name is answer file. But in reality, it's a configuration set. I wasn't invited to that meeting, so I didn't have any input on it. Uh, what do you want to call the uh, folder? What folder do you want to put it into? And I can't put it on my DVD, so we're just going to go ahead and drop it into my C drive. And I have a deployment share, and we show you how to make deployment shares and all that in the classroom. It's pretty easy to do. And we're going to go through in the deployment share, and we're going to call this one our config files. And it says, uh, do you want to do this in OEM? We'll say no. We'll say OK. It doesn't exist. You want to create it? Yes. And one of the big differences is it's not an answer.inf file or anything like that. Instead, it's going to be an XML file. So if I go into my computer here and we get into our distribution share, deployment share, go into our config file, and there it is. There's our XML file. So it is a little bit different. Well, it's incredibly different than what we're potentially used to. But if you remember, you have to grab that WIM file then all the options appear and you can drag and drop and configure to your heart's content. So thanks for coming by. Hopefully this helps out. And if you do have any questions, feel free to email me, doug.bassett at stormwind.com. Have a good one and hope to see you in class.